Okay, welcome back everyone to part five of my Utility AI in Unity tutorial series. In the last part, we covered um, setting up the, the scripts for eating, sleeping, and working. And then we went ahead and um, also implemented the considerations that go behind, that uh, go into uh, those concrete actions for this NPC, uh, the, specifically the energy consideration, the hunger consideration, and the money consideration. And we also hard-coded scores that these considerations would put out for the NPC to decide what actions to take. The reason we did that is because we just wanted to do like a proof of concept to show that this NPC, uh, that the utility AI uh, driving this NPC was actually working, that it was actually picking the right action based on the score that it was seeing for the considerations. In this part, we are going to actually uh, flesh out uh, the code for these considerations and then also tie them in into the uh, work, eat, and sleep actions, okay? Um, but before we dive into that, I just want to talk about um, some extra scripts that I have set up on the side so that we can get this uh, uh, episode going. Um, you can see here, this AI now has um, a UI that we can clearly see here, um, just displaying information about the NPC, specifically the best action that it's currently performing, its current hunger, energy, and money stats, and then just um, what's its what what resource are what resources are in its inventory okay so you can see in the inspector here we have some um, scripts that take care of all this right we have a stat script right we actually let's actually pull that up um, a stat script just a prototype stat script that contains information about its energy hunger money and then just a couple methods here that updates the energy and hunger over time um, and then we also have, you know, there's the script controlling the UI display itself to display information. Um, let's go back to the scene here. I also implemented a script to control or to, yeah, control the resource, how, how the resource uh, works in this game or in the simulation setup. You can see the resource script here. Um, let's look at the script here. So the resource, we have three resource types, food, stone, wood, um, for this, uh, tutorial we're probably just going to have wood uh, trees as uh, resources to, de uh, to demonstrate the utility AI but you know it just contains uh, typical not typical but just information about how much resource it currently has and you know just a method to remove uh, the amount of resource when the NPC uh, walks up to it and starts gathering resources okay and then let's go back to this scene here. We also, I also implemented a storage script here that just basically tracks how much resource has been dumped into this storage unit. And so he has a max uh, capacity per type variable here and I just set it to 1000. So that just means that um, when the NPC dumps uh, a specific resource type into the storage, it, it has, it has uh, space of 1,000 per resource type. So it can dump 1,000 wood resources, it can dump 1,000 stone resources, and, and so on. And it just contains typical uh, methods for you know storage type um, entities such as adding resources, removing resources, okay? And then storage is very similar to the NPC inventory. Uh, they actually inherit from the same parent class here. You know, it just can, uh, the NPC inventory you know, it just contains um, a bunch of methods to add resource, remove resources, um, update the U NPC UI, and uh, just, yep. So it just contains uh, the bare bones, you know, put together by duct tape uh, implementation so that we have a working simulation for um, that the utility AI can um, play with. Right, so we have a stat system, a very simple stat system, a very in simple inventory system, um, a very simple resource uh, system. We have a very simple UI display that will display information for us. Um, all these, I didn't want to spend extra time going through how I implemented all these scripts uh, because they're not related to directly related to ut the utility AI prototype we're building. I just wanted to have 
very simple prototype setup so that we can uh, start using this utility AI in the context of other typical game systems. You wouldn't, um, you know, don't implement these extra systems, you know, inventory, storage, resource, and all that the way I did here. Um, you know, they're just simple mono behaviors. Uh, how you want to do it is actually use scriptable objects, and there's tons of inventory, uh, tons of tutorial videos out there for you how to for, to teach you how to implement these extra systems um, in typical RPG games. Okay. Uh, by the way, you can get all these project files uh, on my GitHub. All these extra game systems, prototype game systems, are on the GitHub project itself. So go ahead and go download it so that you can start off right here. Um, and follow along, okay? In the last part, we just hard-coded these scores into the considerations to demonstrate that our utility AI is working as intended. But in this part, we're actually gonna calculate these scores from game world information. But how do we do that? We do that by using what's called uh, response curves. Response curves are basically equations that translate our game world data into consideration scores that can then be used by utility AI to evaluate how important each action is. Uh, so let's, let's take a look at our NPC example, right? If the NPC has to decide between earning money by working or taking a break to eat, then we have to compare how important eating is versus working for money. And we already established that in our simulation, hunger is the consideration for eat, and money is the consideration for work. So let's say that the NPC has a hunger stat of 75 points out of 100 points, meaning that the NPC is very hungry. Our consideration response curve will then need to take 75 out of 100, or 0.75, as an input and convert it to a consideration score between 0 and 1. And let's say that our response curve gives us a hunger consideration score of, say, 0.8. Now we have to do the same for our money stat, right? Let's say our NPC has 900 gold out of 100 gold, or 1000 gold, sorry, which is the max it can hold in its satchel. Um, that means our input to the money consideration response curve is 900 over 1000 or 0.9 and then we have to design our response curve to translate that into a score of say 0.1 so our score for hunger is 0.8 and our score for money is 0.1 which means that eating is more important than the action of working for money that's how consideration scores are calculated and used and we need to come up with response curves that can do this conversion of in-game data into consideration scores. And there are two ways you can implement response curves, right? One way is to actually write out an equation that takes an, an input, which would be our in-game stats, and then calculates a consideration score. But this approach is harder to do because you'll have to fudge with equations and numbers to get the right response curves that'll behave the way you want. The easier way is to actually just use Unity's handy animation curves to actually draw out uh, the response curve that you want. It's very easy to set up and modify by hand to get the general behavior you need. Um, so that's the approach that we'll be taking for our prototype AI. So let's jump into the code and implement that to show how easy it is to set up actually. Okay. So let's look at the hunger, let's start out with the hunger consideration here. Okay, so we said that we wanted to use an animation curve to give us this uh, score here. The way we're going to do that is basically just we're going to have a um, field uh, that, or we're going to have a, yeah, we're going to have a field that defines um, an animation curve for us. And we'll call that our response curve. And then uh, we'll use that animation curve or response curve to calculate our uh, yeah to, to calculate what uh, our score should be based on our input You can see here uh, it doesn't recognize our NPC object because we actually haven't uh, implemented it yet. So let's 
go ahead and do this first, and then we'll go back and implement our NPC input. Divide by 100F. Okay. And then we will re return our score. So you can see here, we're basically looking up our NPC stat of hunger, and then we divide by the maximum hunger point um, that hunger can exist on, which is 100, right? And then we just uh, clamp it between zero and one, and then we feed it we, we feed it as an input into our response curve. And it basically calculates our score using an animation curve. And then once we get the score, we simply return it, right? But um, this NPC here is not, uh, is, there's a squiggly line under here because we actually have to do the whole uh, dependency injection thing that I talked about in the previous part, right? We have to um, give the NPC controller as an input here, which means that we have to go back to our consideration parent class um, and implement it correctly. So here, this should be an NPC controller NPC, and then let's make sure that we uh, use the right namespace. Okay, just like that. And now our score consideration method will always require an NPC controller. Okay, so let's go back to our hunger consideration, and now everything's all good. So we give it the we give the consideration the NPC controller. Uh, we we look up what the hunger stat is. We divide it by its maximum to get a, uh, a value between zero and one. We give it to the animation curve, and then the animation curve will look up what score does this correspond to, okay? So let's go to our inspector and actually look at how it looks like. Oh, it looks like we actually have to, okay. So let's go, let's actually do it for all the considerations first, and then we will uh, go and look at the inspector. So for ener energy consideration, the exact same thing, right? except we just give it a different um, a different input. Instead of hunger, this now becomes energy. And also the maximum energy you can have is also 100, right? And then let's go ahead and provide a field for the animation curve, just like that, and then Make sure that we supply the NPC object. Okay. And then let's look at our money consideration also. And then do the same thing. And change it to money and then we also said that in our example uh, let's say that it has a 1,000 gold limit for money right so NPC the, uh, it's basically we're looking at how much money does NPC have compared to the limit which is 1,000 gold we feed that as an input and then we get back a score okay there you go Now, what errors is it throwing? And then in our AI brain, we're gonna have to, um, it's throwing an error in our AI brain, which means that we have to, and it's saying, it's complaining that uh, you're not giving us an NPC controller. So let's go ahead and give it the NPC, just like that, and that should fix our error. Okay, there you go. Now let's go into our um, project and actually look at what the scriptable object looks like now. So here, right, are our considerations, hunger, con energy consideration, hunger consideration, and money consideration. Now we can click on this response curve and we can actually define the curve itself. Uh, that way we don't have to use equations, as I mentioned earlier, and complicate the process of defining these response curves. 
So hunger consideration, right? The hunger consideration for eating. How should we how should we define this uh, animation curve? Well, we know that it should lie between the input should lie between zero and one. And we know that when it's very hungry, the score should be very high, right? So it should probably resemble something like this. Um, or maybe we can go with this one, right? We could just go with this one for, for, for demonstration purposes now. So we basically, when it's very, very hungry, right? When, when the input is very high, meaning that this, the hunger stat is very high, close to 100, then the score should be all one or very close to one, right? And as the hunger continues, as we eat and we decrease the hunger points, then the score for eating or for hunger becomes smaller and smaller. And that makes sense, right? If you're not hungry, then your score for hunger considerations should be smaller. Okay. And then we can also do the same for our money consideration, right? Um, the more money we have, the less, uh, the less incentive we have to work. So it should resemble a curve that looks like um, this, but kind of reversed. So let's edit this key here and let's say at, at zero, the value should be one, right? And let's edit this key here and say at time one, the value should be zero, right? Meaning it doesn't need to work. And then we'll fudge with um, the clamped autos just like that okay and now we have that curve that we want right uh, when we when our when our pockets are full of gold then we don't need to work but as uh, you know our pocket gets thinner and smaller and smaller and we don't have much gold then the incentive to work becomes higher and higher right the score meaning the incentive to work um, is high so this basically defines the behavior for our money consideration okay and then for energy right energy for work then uh, let's define. Um, let's actually first make sure that we're 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 describing our these considerations correctly. Energy consideration for for work, okay. And then money hunger consideration uh, for eat, and our money consideration for for work, okay. So our energy consideration, so we know that for working, right, our any consideration, uh, when we have a lot of energy, our incentive for working should be higher, right? All right, actually, this is energy consideration for sleeping, right, for sleeping. Um, so for sleeping, our energy consideration would be uh, when our energy is high, then our 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 need for sleep is low so that means that it should probably resemble something like um like this so we 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 at at, at low energy the score for sleeping is high but at high energy our score or incentive for sleeping is low okay so pretty similar to the other uh the other the other um curve basically like that okay and that so that defines the behavior right high energy means i don't need to sleep which means score for sleeping for energy is low at low energy uh we do need to sleep which means that this this consideration should be higher right close to one okay that way we we, we will definitely sleep and that's 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 it to it that's how you define your response curve right it's super easy when you're able to use these animation curves okay and the cool thing about this is that you as the designer have the ability to define what these response curve is so um whatever behavior you want all you got to do is come to these considerations define what these curves look like and then uh the utility ai will evaluate um its considerations based on these curves the way you define it okay um so now let's take a look at uh let's make sure we have our so our considerations have all been set up so now we have our consideration set up with all their with their response curves let's go ahead and look at the actions themselves okay and and flesh those out so uh, let me just go ahead and close these guys 
and open up our actions. As you recall, if you recall from our la the, la the last episode, right? We 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 simply in our work in our actions, how we did it was that we simply just called in these coroutines, right, and give it a time, the time it takes to work, the time it takes to sleep. But so we actually need to go into these coroutines and define what is happening in these coroutines to make these actions happen. And these coroutines exist on our NPC controller class, and they're right here. Okay. So our do let's look at the do work coroutine, right? Last time we made our, our some comments here saying, hey, we need to actually put in the logic to update the things that are involved with work. So let's do that. Uh, we now have all the um, you know extra scripts uh, for you know uh, stats, inventory, resources, and so we can actually uh, do this now. We can actually code out the logic for what happens when we work. Um, so. Let's do that when and then we can just say let's change this debug message to I am working okay and so basically with uh, um, this coroutine it just waits for you know a given amount of time to harvest one resource basically so after after the countdown uh, finishes then we're just gonna go ahead and add add in add a resource and let's say we'll use a resource type of wood and we will put in one right so we have um, let's actually put 10 for now right so every every um, amount of every every time the countdown is finished then we basically chop we have we already chopped 10 wood in, and put it into our inventory okay and then uh, that's that's it for our, our work coroutine. And then similar to uh, the work coroutine, we do the same thing for a sleep routine, sleep coroutine, right? At the end of every sleep uh, countdown, then our stats energy just replenishes by one, and that's it. And then for our eat. Our eat, right? The logic for updating everything involved with eating goes here. Our eat action will just say um, every time we eat, our stats hunger, our, our hunger stats basically just decreases by 30. And we spend um, some money to, buy, uh, to eat, right? 10. So. Every time uh, eat happens, then hunger decreases by hunger points decreases by thirty, and we spend ten gold to to, to buy food and eat, right? Um, and and the, I remember, although the work and sleep action takes uh, happens over time, um, in our simulation here, the eat action happens instantaneously. Like it just gobbles up food from either its inventory or some sort of village uh, storage of food somewhere. Okay. Um, but for simplicity's sake, it's literally just going to decrease hunger and decrease money instantaneously whenever the eat action is called. Okay. Um, so I believe that is, let's see here. Did I close the stats? And then let's look at this. Um, now to run our test scenarios, we're going to have to go ahead and um, initialize some, some stats values, right? And so I, in the stats script here, this stats class, I already, I already uh, put in some test cases here, right? Um, where we can test it. So in the test case where the NPC will likely work, hunger is, you know, he, it's not hungry at all. It has a lot of energy and its money is pretty low. Okay, so it's definitely gonna wanna work. Um, let's, so let's try that, right? Everything is in place. We're gonna go ahead and run this. And we should see in the message that the NPC is starting to work, okay? So let's give that a try. Hopefully everything works. And you see there, it is working, right? He's working and his energy is high. And as he's working, let's see here. So it's working, right? But uh, we don't see the, the, the inventory change because he's not actually standing next to the tree yet. Um, in the next part, that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually implement the whole movement thing. 
to, to get him to move to places to actually do things. But for now, we're still just demonstrating that, okay, the work action actually works now um, because we're implementing these uh, response curves, right? In, in, in the last part, these response curves were all done by hard coding this score now. But now, uh, our utility AI is actually putting in our stats into a response curve that gives us a score, then it leads to this decision to say, hey, I'm working, okay? So at least we know that that works now. Let's try the other test cases here. Let's change our stats to say, um, let's change our stats to say that uh, he wants to eat, okay? So in this case, you can see his hunger points is very high. His energy is, you know, so-so. Uh, and his pockets are pretty full, but we should see that the most urgent case is that he's hungry, so he's likely going to eat. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so you can see he's eating food, right? He ate food, and his, his hunger is decreasing. And there you go. So we know that hunger, you know, the hunger stuff is... And now he's... Okay, now you see, right? The actions are asleep. The actions are switching back and forth now. But the first thing he did was that he worked. He ate food, and then he started cons uh, determining what else he needed to do based on his stats as they change. Okay, so that's that shows us that um, our hunger consideration is working. Now let's go ahead and um, try the the last test case here, which is he's likely going to sleep. Right. So hunger points is, is low, so he's not hungry at all. His energy is really low, and he has a lot of money. Okay, so he doesn't want to. He doesn't need to work. He doesn't need to eat, but he definitely needs to sleep. So we should sleep. We should see that um, our UI will display that he's 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 sleeping. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit run. Um, did I save this? No, I didn't. Okay, let's go ahead and hit run, and we should see that he, he wants to sleep. There you go. His energy is low, and as he's sleeping, he's gaining one energy. But you can see it keeps fluctuating back and forth between... Right, It keeps going up and down because uh, we haven't implemented the code where he needs to be at home first before um, his energy stops decreasing. But we do know that because his energy is low, He's sleeping and he's gaining uh, energy slowly, right? Okay, so that is a proof of concept, another proof of concept that implementing cons uh, scoring considerations as with, with response curves actually works. So our NPC is now scoring considerations using response curves and then, and then using those scores to make its decision now um, based on uh in-game data that's that's dynamically changing over time right okay so that this pretty much wraps up this part um in the next part i want uh what we'll actually do is implement the the decisions to move places in the game world okay that in itself is um kind of like a whole another beast on its own uh for utility ai uh, that's why I didn't want to go over it in this part because that would just make it way too long. So in the next part, um, I will be going over making uh, the actions and considerations that uh, that will decide uh, where this, how this NPC moves around in the world to get to where it needs to go. Okay, so I, it was a uh, this part was a little bit complicated, um, but I hope I did my best to um, try to make it as easy to understand as possible. Uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comment section and I will try my best to answer them. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for sticking around and I hope you got something out of this and hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks, bye.